Hey, Hi, how are you? How are you? Hi, sorry, I'm a few minutes behind here. Oh, no problem. You know, I'm hungry and thirsty and my head is going crazy, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Nothing serious. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Just a regular thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good to see you. Thanks so much for your time. Of course. I'm so happy to be able to chat with you. You got quite a collection of, of games behind you. Yes, it's all all Blu-rays and games and wow. yes, 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 yes. I, I, I I'm still totally into the physical stuff. I mean, I love streaming, of course, but yes, I grew up yes. like in the '90s, so I'm like. I know, me too, me too. I know it. It still feels that tactile feeling of holding something and, and yes, right, holding Ab it, yeah, physically. Totally, totally, absolutely. I get it. Yeah. I, I just don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm right there with you. It's a struggle because it doesn't feel the same when you stream it. It just doesn't feel as important or something. Yes, right, right. Absolutely. Um, so are you ready to start? Yeah, let's do it. So first of all, we can say you made it. You are on, on, a, on a Netflix show that, it had, that has become like a huge phenomena. And I mean, as, as of yesterday, August 25th, it's still at number four on the daily charts. Even though it wow. came out so many weeks ago and people were already able to watch all episodes, it's not like that they get one right. episode every week, right? So yeah. how much does it mean to you to be on a show that is so on fire? It's amazing. It's, it's, I can't even describe how um, proud I am to be a part of the show. And obviously when you're, when you're filming it, you hope that it resonates and that it does well, but you just don't know until, until it comes out and, and people respond to it. So I'm just so grateful that, um, well, first and foremost, that I'm a part of it and that I've been able to play this character that I love so much, but also just that the, the fans of the show love season two as much as season one and that they're so loyal and that they, are enjoying it. I, I enjoyed it. I've watched it like two or three times now and I'm a huge fan <laughs> of it too. <laughs> so cool. What would you say, what is your advice to young actors and actresses who are also hoping to turn their passion into a profession? Because there are so many that are trying really hard and for some reason it doesn't yeah. work out for them. And then are yeah. they, there are also the people who are like waiting to be discovered, which is like probably the wrong way. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a really difficult thing because there's no one path. Everybody finds their way through a, a different path. And so it does make it very difficult when you're starting out because it's not like when you want to become a lawyer, you know, you go to, you go to law school and, you, you know, there's a very clear um, steps laid out to do that. Um, I think it's just important. First of all, you have to be very patient because it just it does take time. And I think when I was younger, I thought, you know, that'll be different. You know, it'll be quick for me. And then yes. you realize like, no, you have to put the work in. You have mm -hmm. to, you know, um, go out for audition after audition after audition and work hard and not hear anything. And, and you have to want it bad enough that that doesn't deter you and it doesn't break your heart so much that you just fall apart and give up. You have to really um, love it so much that you just keep going. Um, and I think also just keep learning. It's obviously a very strange time in the world. This is different than anything any of us have experienced. So um, I think this is a really great time. Use this time to learn. And there's so many resources online and so many classes that you can do digitally and YouTube and books. And so I think just like keep growing and keep doing the work and then trust that that opportunity will come and don't worry about how it will come. Just do your best to be the best you can be. Right. And I must say what I really love about Grace is that I mean, for the other characters and for the other actors, it feels like, okay, we get to do a second season. Let's, let's see the development of my character. Yeah. In your case, it seems a little bit different because it feels like you get to play different versions of Grace. So would you say that's one of the things that, that is, you know, like one of the things that makes this character even more interesting? Definitely. Yeah. When I, when I heard from our showrunner, Steve Blackman, um, how they were going to take my character this season, I was so excited because you're right. It is a whole new character. It's a completely different variation of the same person, but, but, you know, a whole new entity. The AI grace um, was built from the human grace, but the human grace has all these quirks and, and science and her brain. And, you know, there, there's so many differences. So I got, I got to really, build this new character from the ground up and make all these new choices, which was so much fun. And it was fun to get to play a human. You know, I love playing an AI too, but it was fun to get to kind of have those 
those impulsive moments that that AIs don't have. Humans are we have that spark of of something that you can't really recreate in um, in artificial anything. I think. Right. What was so great in the first season, I think, was um, that it played like with uh, with the question: Does she feel something or does she not feel something? You know. Mm. And I remember one scene that I really loved was that um, that the kids were trying to find out if if she knows more than she says. And she watches over to Pogo and he makes her understand, be quiet. And in that moment, I don't know, in her eyes, you just mm -hmm. see that there's more than just robot grace. But how did you do that? Because it feels like an impossible thing to do to be a robot version, but <laughs> showing emotions at the same time through your eyes. Yeah, exactly what you're saying. Um, it definitely was a challenge and, and it's a very fine line to walk. Um, because it has to be believable. It's important to me that it, I'm believable as an AI. You know, there have, there have to be those signs of, of this person not being human. But then that, that's something else underneath the surface. So I just always tried to keep it very subtle. And I saw it as her kind of trying to rise up against her programming. You know, she has this programming that she's constrained by for a lot of the season. And then when she has this chance to kind of, again, she's rebooted and she's able to start over, it's almost like she she's able to express these parts of herself that we're trying to break through for so many years. Um, and she's making her own choices and this man is no longer around to control her in that way. And mm -hmm. um, I think that the writers did a really beautiful job of just building those layers throughout the season. And yeah. um, so it was fun for me to get to kind of go along those turns and find little ways to sort of hint at something more under the surface. Yes. There was there was one thing that that reminded me of myself in, in the second season it was just so fun because it was like when when uh, Grace was introduced as nanny to Vanya and before mm -hmm. that she rejected pretty much everyone. Yeah, that, that was so me because when really? I, was kid, yeah, I was like, it's going to be my mom or no one else, you know, <laughs> but I, have to say, I never smashed anyone to the wall. I, well, that's good to hear because yeah, uh, absolutely. it's a it's pretty serious <laughs> thing to do. I would have some concerns if uh, that was a part of your childhood. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. No, I, I wouldn't even be free at this point. So No, I think, I think you would be on a very different life track by now. <laughs> Definitely. I would probably join Vanya in her, you know. Yeah, it sounds like you'd be a good addition to the, to the crew. Yes, yes. But <laughs> in my case, there will be no getting out, so... Well, it's probably good you're here then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but did you have uh, any similar experiences when you were a child? You know, were you acceptable when you had a nanny or? Hmm, I don't know. I did have I did have a, a nanny of sorts when I was younger because both of my parents were working. Uh, but I loved her. I was obsessed with her. My mom. My mom always tells a story that she came home and I guess I would just watch soap operas all day with this nanny because I'd she'd come home and I'd go, I'd just list off this very complex storyline of, you know, she was betrayed by him. And my mom's like, what have you been doing all day? You know, <laughs> three-year-old me just, just sitting watching these soap operas with her nanny, but I loved her. She was like part of the family. Oh, that's so nice to hear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I didn't try to kill her, so. That's yeah. good, that's good to hear. Yeah, it is good. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this time in the second season, the characters are stuck in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering if you would be stuck in the 60s, what would you miss the most from the present that wasn't available back then? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think that I, because I, I'm such a movie and TV addict, you know, obviously Netflix and all these amazing streaming platforms are so much out there. I think that I would, I would miss that for sure that, you know, movies have come such a long way in the last 30, 40, 50 years. Like it's, Absolutely. it's night and day. So I think that would probably be something that, you know, I would go to the movie theater and it would be not quite as satisfying. <laughs> And there's no HD, no HD. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, where, where's the, you know, where's the Netflix? Yes. Really <laughs> um, so what I love about the fact that we go back to the 60s is that not only do we get to see the nostalgic side of the 60s, but also the problems that people were dealing back then. And we yeah. also get to see that some of the problems are still problems today. And, but also, I think the show also shows us that we should not forget how much previous generations have already achieved in all these years. Mm -hmm. so would you agree with that? 
Definitely. Yeah, it's it's really um, timely. I think the season coming out, obviously, with um, everything going on this year and, and Black Lives Matter, you know, and, and that's been going on, like you said, for a very long time. This is not a new issue. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really, really amazing um, that our season was able to come out in the midst of this and, and for people to kind of reflect on the civil rights movement and the fact that this is a fight that's been going on for many, many years. Um, this is not a new fight and, and it kind of just really um, explains why these frustrations and, and this hurt is, is there because it's been such a long time coming and people are tired. Um, and I thought that Emmy did such a beautiful job of um, you know, playing Allison in the middle of that and then her growth as a character to um, to go back and, and be be a part of this movement. Um, it was a really important part of the story, I think. Absolutely. And what I love is that we have the political stuff in there, but it's not about it. We're still we still have a story and character driven mm -hmm. uh, piece of art here, because sometimes you watch newer shows or movies where you feel like, OK, the political stuff is like the the main thing and you the feel focus, like you're yeah. build around it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I spoke to David Castaneda a few weeks ago. Oh, and he great. Said, yeah, he was, he was awesome as well. He was, he was like, um, the moment you start preaching is the moment you lose the audience. So yeah. what's your opinion on it? Yeah, that's, that's really wise what David said. It's true because it's, um, it, I think that it's a delicate balance because you have to honor history and, um, I love learning. I love putting putting on a show and learning things I didn't know about that era. I think it's really important to be true to history and to honor that history. But then you're right, the story is really important. It's about the characters and the relationships. And so it's that balance between, right. you know, having that building that atmosphere and the time, um, you know, the JFK assassination. And that was very interwoven with the storyline, which I thought was it was really cool and really great writing. Um, so I think it's important. It's important important to, to have the history and build that build that um, surrounding atmosphere, but, but not kind of knock the audience over the head with it because the audience wants to see the development of the story. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, there's also, um, you and I were too young in the 60s. We were not around. <laughs> yeah, I was very young. I was, I was yes. minus, uh, minus 20 something years. <laughs> yes, 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 for me too. So, yeah. so we only know through movies and tellings how it must have been. So, yeah. But the great thing about this show is that you can go in any directions. You can show the past, the, the, the future, and you can show the, show the 80s and 90s and all the, all the times. Definitely. So would you find it nostalgic to revisit times that you personally experienced, like the 90s or early 2000s? Yeah, I, I love the, it's so funny. I just, I, I love listening to the music from the 90s and the, I'm still like, I will watch Friends one million times. You can't tell me that Friends <laughs> is not something that will be relevant forever. Um, so I think, I, yeah, definitely that nostalgia. I think we all have nostalgia for, for that time when we were growing up and we were really yes. little and, and teenagers. Um, yeah, I would love to kind of go back and, and see the 90s. I don't know. In terms of when you look at the decades, I think that once we got into the 2000s, I, I don't know, fashion wise, it's not anywhere near as interesting as to me the <laughs> 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, I think yeah. we kind of just got a little more boring <laughs> with our fashion <laughs> choices. So I don't know if I'd want to see, see the story set maybe in the, the 90s and 2000s, but I miss it for sure. It's so fun that you, that you mentioned France because, because <laughs> I, whenever I watch somebody, something from the 90s again, um, some friends will go like, why do you do that? There's so much new stuff. <laughs> how, how can you watch yeah. the stuff? There's so much new stuff. I know. It's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's, it's almost yeah. like when you go back to a restaurant, do you want to order the meal that you know that you love? Or do you want to yeah. try something new? And it's like, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes you're in the mood to try something new, but sometimes you just want to, you're just like hankering for that, you know, amazing sandwich. You just need it. You know, you love it. Yeah. Yeah, and you, go, and you go like, yes, you, because you don't want to get disappointed, right? If you order something else and you exactly. get disappointed, you're like, oh god, it's the worst. That food regret. I don't know if you ever get that. I'm pretty intense with my food. I'm like, oh god, I ordered the wrong thing. I know it. I'm not gonna like it. It's it's pretty life or death when it comes to to food for me. <laughs> um. So, so some of the cast members said that that uh, they would like to have the ability to time travel. Mm -hmm. Um. Would you be someone who would like to revisit, you know, the 20s, 30s, you know, the times that you know from human history? Or mm -hmm. would you be more interested to dig into the future and explore something Ooh. that no one explores? 
I don't know if I'd want to go to the future. I, I think that I probably would learn things that I wouldn't want to know. And then I would come back and I would be thrown into an asylum because everyone thinks I'm crazy. That's historically in movies, that's what happens. Um, I think I'd want to go back. I, I love history. I'm fascinated by history. I am fascinated by World War II era. I love reading books set in that time. I just, it's, there's almost a romance to it because they were so present and the war just just you know their, their lives were really survival and there's just something really fascinating to me about how everything unfolded at that time i don't think i'd want to go back to that time i'm sure it was a horrible horrible time to um go through but uh right. but yeah i don't know i'd want i'd want to go back for sure more than i'd want to go forward i just don't know i'd have to really think about what time because as we've learned from time travel it can really uh can be a blessing and a curse. You go to the wrong yes. time. Not yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of time, what just comes uh, comes up right now is that there were no smartphones in in the show so far. Oh yes. And, yeah, and Blackman said he it's like he, he wanted to, he wanted to achieve you know like a, a, a specific atmosphere and timeless. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think? How much you would have heard? Umbrella Academy, if we would have like Klaus being on his phone there <laughs> time or so. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that was a really, really smart choice on Steve's part. Um, I think that, you know, phones and TV, just just technology in general can be a bit of a crutch for stories. Sometimes it serves the story and it's, it's a really important component, I think, of telling the story accurately. But in this case, I think it's about the characters and the relationships. And so um, I think I don't think it would have served um, our story to have the phones. I think it's sort of a distraction yes. from what's really important. Um, and that's like phones in real life, right? I mean, they're, they're amazing tools, but they definitely can hurt us and take us away from what matters in the present moment. So yeah, I, th I thought that was really smart. And what would you, what would you say, um, because you watch the show and you feel like, okay, that superpower is cool, that cool, that mm -hmm. not so much. So yeah. on which one would you give a pass? Oh, I've, I've been asked the opposite question. This is cool. I like it. Um, <laughs> this is good. I mean, they all Great. have, um, I really don't think that I'd want to have to see dead people. <laughs> Same. Same. Yeah, I think that one, that one's probably the most cursed of all the powers. I mean, they all sort of have their, their dangers to them. But um, yeah, I think, I think uh, that that's probably the one that would be the most difficult. And you see why Klaus self-medicates because it's just, you know, it's pretty depressing stuff to have to, to manage. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you can't you control imagine? it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, could you imagine, you know, you want to have five minutes for yourself, you want to read the book. <laughs> And then you have someone behind you saying, hey, can you turn the page? I'm oh like, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it'd be so annoying. You'd be like, really, no way. Right? Absolutely. Face and feeling suffocated here. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I wouldn't want that as well. Yeah, yeah, we're on the same page. No thanks. Yeah. So what would you say for, for, for the future of the show? Uh, what, what are your own expectations, not only on the show, but also on Grace? Um, well, I mean, I, I never really have expectations because you just don't know where things will ever go in this world, um, the movie industry and everything. But um, I think, you know, the show's done so well. Um, I'm certainly hoping for a third season, as is everybody. Um, yes. I'm, you know, it's done so well. I think it would be a travesty not because it's just so brilliant. And like you said, they can go in a million directions. So there's just so yeah. much potential there. Yes. Um, I feel like they're just getting started, really. Um, I don't know for Grace. I mean, I think obviously I would love to come back. I love the characters so much. I love all the cast and crew. Um, so it would be a huge blessing to come back, but I really don't know. I mean, I, I know that they'll do whatever's best for the story. So um, I guess we'll just see. Absolutely. Well, I cannot wait as well for, for, for more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and Jordan, thanks so much for your time. It was a huge pleasure talking to you Me today. Too. And Thank I you wish you much. all the best. I have, you have an, a, a movie coming out as well, right? Uh, yeah, I'm actually in Toronto right now. Excuse my background. I just just got here a couple days ago, and it's crazy. Um, yeah, I'm shooting a film here um, for the next month. It's like a psychological thriller. I haven't actually released that I'm in it, so I'll hold off because I don't know if I'm allowed. <laughs> um, but uh, we start shooting next week, and it's going to be pretty cool. So look out for look out for some more information about that. Awesome, super cool. All the best for that as well, Jordan. Thank you. And have Thank a great you. day. Awesome, you too. Thanks nice so to much. Bye. Bye. Bye.